Welcome to 2000's Childhood Pop. My name is Mr. 96. This episode will be a bit different from the past, not for any musical reasons, but because I'm not sure how eligible this song is. Sure, the song in question was released in 2008, but I technically didn't listen to it until 2010, so its eligibility is questionable. Whether this song is eligible or not, I still feel I have an obligation to educate the public on this curious artist from the late 2000s known as Colby O'Donis. This song was suggested to me by LeCant on Patreon. If you want to suggest 2000 songs for me to review, stay tuned until the end of the video. I've had an interest in reviewing a Colby O'Donis song for a while, which is ironic because probably no one has thought of the man in a very long time, this song especially. During the 2000s, I only ever knew Colby O'Donis as that guy who appeared on Just Dance by Lady Gaga. Hell, I honestly have a more interesting story about how I discovered Just Dance than I do for What You Got. Before most of us knew Lady Gaga by name, I first discovered Just Dance when she performed it live during Miss Universe 2008. At the time, my mom watched it because the competition was being held in Vietnam, and during the swimsuit competition, which tells you why I was paying attention in 2008, this awesome instrumental and song were playing, sung by this weird white-haired lady doing cool poses. What I also remember from that event was that my mom thought Miss Vietnam was not as pretty as she hoped, which I thought was a harsh sentiment. I was 12, so all these women were fine to me. But anyways, I didn't know the name of the song or the artist as I only remembered the instrumental, so when I eventually saw the music video later that year and heard those opening notes, I was glad I could listen to the full thing. I was trying to mentally process the Lady Gaga experience for the first time when suddenly this handsome man that I didn't know appeared on the third verse. Let's talk about Mr. Colby O'Donis Cologne. At first, when I saw that his stage name omitted his Hispanic last name, I thought this was another case of the entertainment industry forcing a whitewashed stage name. But it turns out he was named after a firefighter named Colby O'Donis who died while saving Colby's dad's life, so you know what? I take it all back. In 2006, Colby O'Donis was about to sign with Babyface's label, but before that could fall through, O'Donis's management was able to set up a meeting between him and Akon. Akon ended up loving his stuff and recruited him to sign with his own label, ConLive Distribution. And so, with Akon's endorsement, Colby O'Donis officially signed with him in 2008, and he dropped his debut album and debut single. I I mentioned earlier that I didn't actually hear this song until 2010, so why am I including this in a show about 2000's childhood pop? Well, it all comes back to those four recurring letters on my channel. A, B, D, C. Yes, in Season 5 of America's Best Dance Crew, the crew Heavy Impact had to perform in the style of Colby O'Donis' What You Got. I have referenced ABDC in 2000's Childhood Pop probably too many times to count, but as a result, it sort of provides me some wiggle room. So yes, I technically didn't hear this song until 2010, but ABDC is such an integral part of my music-loving youth that it feels so tied to that era of the late 2000s and early 2010s. In addition, let's talk about the concept of decades. People should know by now that decades are just an arbitrary measure of time and that trends don't neatly fit into these divisions. Things constantly evolve, so a lot of major trends in a decade usually don't start until a few years in. For example, the early 2010s were just a continuation of the club trends in 08 and 09. Really, it wasn't until Royals by Lord dropped in 2013 that pop music truly changed to the moodier aesthetic prominent throughout the 2010s as we know them today. Plus, you can't just summarize a decade with a few songs. 2010 has way more in common with an artist like Fergie than it does with someone like Billie Eilish. What I'm trying to say with all of this is that I'm relaxing my criteria for song eligibility as me listening to a song in 2010 shouldn't merely be a disqualifier. 2010 is culturally an extension of the 2000s, so if I heard a song at the time that had an overall connection to something 2000s related in my life, it should still count. So theoretically, I could review Bring Me to Life by Evanescence if someone wanted me to. I could use a higher turnout in my polls. Remember to vote, kids. 
But besides the ABDC connection, I want to talk about what you got because I think the song is fucking great. In many ways, this song could only be made in 2008. It has the R&B stylings of the mid-2000s, but it also has a bit of the electropop sound that would explode in 2009. In that way, I could see how it got popular, as it's a very pleasant tune to listen to, but at the same time, it makes you wonder how much of that was because of Colby himself. I mentioned how Colby signed with Akon's label, but I didn't mention how even his music is very Akon-esque in its sound. While Colby's voice isn't exactly like Akon's, it definitely has that tone of soulful enough, but not enough to hide your bulging lust. In addition, Akon co-produced the song, so I'm starting to believe that it became a hit because it was an Akon-like song performed by Akon's protege at a time when Akon was super popular. Oh yeah, and Akon was a guest feature. That somehow slipped my mind, despite his presence being pretty ubiquitous elsewhere. In a way, it sort of reminds me of how Lil Baby's first big hit, Yes Indeed, made it to the top 10 purely because of Drake's star power and influence. As a result, it made it hard for me to see the appeal of Lil Baby himself. But the difference between Colby and Lil Baby is that Lil Baby eventually developed his own identity and string of hits, and he's definitely more respected than Drake in our current year of 2024. Now, this is just pure speculation on my part, but if I had to guess why Colby O'Donis didn't become a household name, I'd say it was because he couldn't escape Akon's shadow. It's hard to say if he's a one-hit wonder or not, because technically he's more known for Just Dance than he is for his own song. But to be fair, people don't tend to count features towards an artist's hits catalog. I mean, we all think of Chameleon Air as a one-hit wonder, yet I don't see anyone talk about his feature on Sierra's Get Up as his second hit, so for my money, features do not count. As a result, I don't count Colby as a two-hit wonder. Or a three-hit wonder. Oh yeah, he was actually part of a third hit song that people tend to forget nowadays. Besides What You Got and Just Dance, there was another hit featuring Colby O'Donis that people don't seem to remember. And of course, it was by Colby's mentor. I'll be honest, when I first heard this song in 2009, I confused the opening melody for the beat to Better Off Alone. For some reason, I always link these two songs together even after I realized they weren't the same, but it turns out Akon didn't sample the Alice DJ song. Because that wouldn't happen until a few years later. Anyways, I always liked Beautiful as it's got a nice head-bopping melody that's much more pleasant to listen to than some of his earlier hits like Smack That or I Wanna Fuck You. And Colby fits so well into this 2009 vibe that his verse is actually my favorite part of the song. Colby O'Donis has a much warmer sounding voice than Akon, so he provides a nice contrast to Akon's more aggressive style, making the entire aesthetic of the music feel much more layered. It's been about seven years since I made my 2009 best list, a list I have many regrets about, and one of those regrets is that I didn't put Beautiful on the list proper. But after that, Colby O'Donis just disappeared from the public eye. You'd think that Akon connection would have led to more career opportunities, but that ended up being a terrible decision in hindsight. Being Akon's protege may have been lucrative in the mid to late 2000s, but that clout was not going to help him in the 2010s. Other than being on Sexy Chick by David Guetta, as well as a posthumous song by Michael Jackson, Akon would be surprisingly absent from the charts in the 2010s. He mostly spent the decade focusing on philanthropy and donating to charities in Africa, which, you know what? Good on him. It's a much better and more productive use of his time than trying to make club jams in a post-Royals era of pop. I could mention that he dropped a 2019 reggaeton album that went nowhere, but that's completely beside the point as he had better things to do. And if you think Akon singing in Spanish is weird, you want to know how I first discovered Akon as a kid? <laughs> Oh yeah, 
Akon was on the soundtrack to Sonic 06, specifically the Sonic Story credits theme symbolizing the infamous romance between Sonic and Princess Elise. I'm amazed Sega was able to afford Prime Akon, as I doubt even he remembers recording this track. But unlike Sega, Colby O'Donis couldn't fall back on Akon after that debut album. And calling it a debut album is being generous because Colby O was the only album he ever released. So if you're wondering why you haven't heard any songs he made after 2009, the answer is because he barely made any. He tried to get that second album out in 2014, but the lack of promotion doomed the few singles he released, so the album never came. That early success he had by signing to Akon's label ended up being his ultimate downfall once Akon was no longer relevant. It's tragic, really. But Mr. 96, you may be asking. Lady Gaga was still with Akon's label, so why couldn't Colby O'Donis continue making music like her? Well, my answer to that would be that he isn't Lady Gaga. People weren't going to cosplay as Colby O'Donis. The last I heard about Colby making music was in 2019 when he released a new song called Confidence. Shorty says she grown, she got confidence. Got it on her own, she got options. Instead of following the style of Akon's late 2000s pop, he decided to follow the style of The Weeknd's late 2010s pop. Seriously, it sounds so strange hearing the Just Dance guy singing the trap beats. I don't have much to say about the song other than Colby O'Donis seems to pop in and out of existence on social media. On his Facebook page, he made a post last February talking about his new single Confidence, and one of the comments straight up says, That song came out four years ago, Colby. Maybe his sense of time was fucked up by the pandemic like all of us, but it's just funny to think about how he still never released that second album. Don't worry, 17th anniversary for sure. So whether or not you consider Colby O'Donis a one-hit wonder, I still think his one hit as a lead artist is great. I don't listen to it every day, but whenever I'm reminded of it, I definitely play it on loop for a while. Though I do wonder what pop music would have been like if Colby O'Donis became famous enough to have a fan base. Perhaps he would have been seen as the Weekend Light rather than Akon Light. I guess we'll never know. Maybe he would have had a longer career if he signed with a different label, or maybe he never would have had a hit at all without that Akon connection. As it stands, his career was a double-edged sword. He wasn't set up for long-term success, but his brief time in the spotlight gave us some great music. Once again, I want to thank LeCant for suggesting this, as Colby O'Donis holds a strange place in pop history. And if you want to suggest 2,000 songs for me to review, you can join my wonderful patrons on Patreon. For just $1 per video, you can join my patron-only Discord server where we chat and chill, and at $2 per video, you get to vote on what songs I review for my series 2000's Childhood Pop. At $5 per video, you get to be listed in my Names of Fame, and at $10 per video, you get a personal shout through the heart, along with Casey Vellante, Jason Semler, and Prideful Zella. Once again, I'm Mr. 96. If you want to see more pop reviews, click the subscribe button below, and tap that bell to be notified when I drop a new episode. Next will be the corrections video, and then it's the worst list in December. Pop songs may come in numbers, but there's only one. 96. No, yeah, goodbye, my, my. Can you